Take a guess at one of the biggest reasons newer agencies struggle to get their business off the ground and on the path to financial freedom. It's the failure to generate enough leads. And why does this happen? Because nobody is reading your cold emails. And that's what I'm gonna help you fix. So in today's episode, I'm going to make cold emails practical and painless by providing downloadable templates and arming you with the data that you need to have on when to send your messages. I'll cover everything from the three biggest mistakes newer agencies tend to make when doing cold email, the best times and days to send emails based on replies, not just open rates, the anatomy of a great email, from the subject line through to the call to action, and how to follow up without being spammy. By the time you're done watching, you'll have the structure and discipline to craft killer cold emails that sets your agency apart. In following this approach, you'll go from an agency that has a handful of core clients with little growth to one that's got more opportunities than you know what to do with. So stay tuned for an explosive episode because we've crunched the data on hundreds of thousands of emails to help you change the way you do your outreach. Let's get into it. Okay, so the first thing you should know as an agency is how the email landscape is changing. And I want to dispel some of the sensationalist headlines you may have seen proclaiming that cold email is dead. So in late 2023, Google implemented what it describes as a tune-up for the email world by adding protections to reduce spam in everyone's inboxes. Whether you have or haven't come across this, it's really important to cover what these changes mean for you as an agency, because if you don't follow these, your cold email strategy is doomed to fail. So Google introduced three requirements for bulk email senders starting in February 2024. First, you'll need to strongly authenticate your email. Second, you have to provide one click unsubscription and process that request in two days. No more of this reply to unsubscribe business. And third, Google will enforce a clear spam rate of 0.3%. That means if you send, say, 10,000 emails and 30 of them get marked as spam, Gmail may prevent your messages from getting through inboxes in future. If you want to understand these changes in more detail, just Google 2024 Gmail guidelines and there is a ton of content about it. For you as a newer or existing agency, these changes are actually a huge opportunity because what Google has done is basically made the email experience better. You see competitors and other sellers who don't pay attention to these changes will be heading straight to local businesses' spam folders. That means less competition in inboxes. So business owners are going to have more time to pay attention to those emails that do make it into their inbox, like the very thoughtful cold emails you'll learn how to create in just a moment. But before going into that, I just wanna help you set some foundations because a lot is changing around the world of outreach. First, Get AI to help you not write your cold emails for you. People can smell when your messages are copied and pasted from ChatGPT. So personalization is critical, but AI is invaluable for the operational backend stuff. Second, no BS. Time is of the essence, and in today's world, business owners want you to get straight to the point, but that still doesn't give you a free ticket into a cold, hard sell. Third, it's all about multi-channel. Cold emailing is a great initial way to plant an information seed in a prospect's mind, but it isn't the only channel. So a multi-channel workflow loop where you follow up via social media, a phone call, ads, back to email, super important. Fourth, mobile optimization. 81% of people read emails on their phone. So when you prepare cold emails, look at it on your phone. Is it too long? Is it too boring? You need to be your harshest critic. Last, having good infrastructure is critical. It's very inefficient for you as an agency to have manual processes and try to keep track of which prospect is clicked on what, who needs to be followed up, manually sending that next email in the sales sequence, being completely blind on which subject lines are and aren't working. A good cold email outreach platform can take care of all of that, so I'd strongly consider investing in one. Now let's get to the framework of a cold email strategy and I'd like to share some wisdom from other agency owners I've interviewed about the three biggest mistakes they avoided from the very start. One of these is that when people start a new agency, they get way too excited and they start sending messages without really thinking about the outcome and what they want to achieve. It's really important that you have clear objectives and to make this practical, here is an agency-centric three-stage cold outreach framework that I've put together with the help of other agencies who've been doing this for a long time. 
The first stage is your top of funnel or tofu. These are leads you're contacting for the first time. So here you want to have templates that help you with any one of these things. Get leads to engage with a needs assessment, get leads to become aware of you, get them to read a case study, ask them a question about their challenges, and follow up on an existing email. The second is the middle of funnel or MOFU. So your prospect has engaged with you in some way from your tofu email and they've progressed further in the funnel. The goal now could be any one of these specific things. Providing them social proof, sending a testimonial, sending a personalized video, sending specific information the prospect has asked for, and again, following up. And stage three, we get to the bottom of the funnel, or BOFU. They've shown clear interest in your services, you've perhaps had a conversation, and this is where you make it as easy as possible for them to book a demo with you. So sending them proposed times or a scheduling link, following up on a demo request or a completed demo, and making them a special offer. Now, this is just a general framework for agencies, and we'll be going through real life examples and templates soon. But the point is, if you plan out the objective of each type of cold email or outreach at each of these stages, your probability of success is going to be dramatically higher. Remember, as an agency, you are going to have many leads at different stages of the funnel at different times. So a good CRM will help you understand and automate a lot of this, especially that critical following up part. The second early mistake you want to avoid is not understanding your buyer persona. I can't stress how important this is. If you don't understand your target audience, you cannot use the very specific language and lingo in your cold emails and outreach that your leads will read and say, ah, you get me. But how do you as an agency owner fix this problem quickly and easily? We get our friend AI to help us. So here's a quick prompt that I put into ChatGPT. I told it that I'm a newer agency and I'm looking to target realtors and I want to understand their pain points and needs and I want to be able to offer them solutions. So what solutions are relevant? Look at what it spat out. It's bang on. Now I'd still recommend verifying any information from ChatGPT by talking to people in that persona, but this will save you a truckload of time and help you calibrate your cold emails that much better. And the third mistake, if I didn't say it enough, it's not following up. Prospects can stop responding at any stage of the funnel. They get busy, they're away. And one way to stand out is by baking in follow-up emails into your cadence. And this is where, again, a good system can really help you with that. And our data shows us that agencies that follow up at least six times are more successful at sales. Six is your magic number and we'll talk about why in a moment. Okay, now that we got those key principles out of the way, it's time to get our hands dirty and write some copy for our agency cold emails. So I'm gonna introduce you to the structure called the anatomy of a great cold email, and it's got five elements to it. You wanna craft an irresistible subject line. You want to connect with your reader with a great opening. Write compelling body copy, close with a clear call to action, and use your signature wisely. Let's dig into these one by one and keep watching because after we go through these elements, I'll share and take you through the free templates that I have for you. Okay, so your subject line is the first impression you make. This needs to be short. Four to six words is what we recommend and please do not treat it as an afterthought because our data shows 47% of prospects will decide whether to open your email or not open your email based on simply the subject line. Now, a natural question that I get from sellers is, should I include anything in the Johnson box or that little snippet text field? And the short answer is no, less is more. Now, here's an example of an email subject line that was sent by an agency to a realtor prospect. It reads, boosting lead generation, a realtor's guide. Now, remember our research showed realtors struggle with what? Generating leads. This hits the spot because it uses the problem solution tactic and to avoid seeming generic, it mentions the keyword realtor. So when the prospect opens it or looks at it in their inbox, they think it's relevant for them. So this particular agency has done well using this approach, super simple. Now that's just one example. Let's go through three more designed to spark curiosity based on what our research shows. So in the second example, we have badass marketing plus peak coffee. So the template here is your company plus prospects company. So when your brand is being mentioned in the subject line, it just pops out to the prospect. 
Another one is five-star reviews for Barber's Salon. So it's teasing the prospect with something they probably want badly, higher ratings. So the formula is idea for company. Now, we also find longer subject lines of between 36 to 50 characters. They can be effective if they're done in the right way. So as an example, we've got here, happy with Salesforce, Lee. So the formula is happy with tool name, first name. Be 100% sure that Lee, or your prospect in this case, is using that tool. This next one is effective where the local business has a clear problem. So this one says, I can improve your search rank in 60 days. The formula is, I can improve your metric by amount. Now it's a bold claim, but we know sellers do this where they're very confident in getting those results and they know that the prospect is really looking to improve on that metric. Now that's the subject line. So after grabbing attention with your subject line, keep readers hooked with a compelling opening. Where possible, my personal recommendation is you want to try and establish a connection. Now that's not always the case, but whatever you do, don't talk too much about yourself or go in for that hard sell because that won't work. Now here's an example of a deal that I closed personally. There was this finance director on LinkedIn. He ran some really awesome webinars for a mutual funds company. And one day those webinars disappeared. Now I saw that as an opportunity because I know the snitch and I know one of their biggest challenges is that these people often lack the capacity to create enough good content. So here was my cold email. The subject line reads, where did your webinars go? In the opening line, I say, hi, Gary, I love your weekly webinar series on LinkedIn. I've learned a lot about investing in ETS thanks to it. I noticed there haven't been any recent episodes and I'm curious as to why. That's it. That was the whole cold email. It's short, but there were a few subtle tactics I deployed. First, I put myself in the prospect's shoes. So if I was to get a cold email like that, of course I'd notice and be inclined to respond because it looks like it's from a genuine fan. They're curious about where this webinar series went. I probably want to help them understand uh, why, I'm, why I'm not doing it anymore. The second, as they say, a little bit of flattery goes a long way. In the opener, I told him how much I loved his content. Now this example was actually multi-channel. I initially didn't get a reply to the email because it went to his secondary inbox for some reason. And that's why we want to layer in a multi-channel approach. Because I followed up on LinkedIn and mentioned that I'd sent an email, it then progressed to a call, an in-person meeting, and then an eventual close. So that's just one idea of an effective opener. Okay, number three, we want to write compelling body copy. You've got a good subject line, you've got a good opener, what do we do for the rest of the copy? And how much copy is too much? How much is too little? Luckily, the data tells us the right answer. And the data says three to five sentences is the sweet spot. It's really important you be disciplined about that. And I really want to stress that you should write like you talk. Now, if you don't have that type of background or in with your lead, you're going to have to rely on making your best educated guess to fill in that copy. And that comes from really understanding the persona and then rounding out your email with useful resources like a case study, a guide, a video, a testimonial, etc., and incorporating a really trendy topic like artificial intelligence. Here's an example that I think is really effective. There's this webinar company called On24. They did general research about a colleague of mine who hosts webinars and is trying to figure out how to effectively use AI in their campaigns. So when I asked her what she liked about this email, she said, it's super relevant and has a timely subject line. It connects with her role and establishes value. It's got a great opener because it speaks to her pain points and opens her up to new ideas. The seller has sent a link to a valuable resource. And she's ended that email with a question, not a sales pitch. It's four sentences right into that sweet spot and right to the point. This is a great example. And in the template pack that I'll take you through soon, there'll be plenty more. Number four, you want to end your email with a clear call to action or CTA that prompts the recipient to take the next step. Make it easy for them to say yes by offering low friction CTAs. So some of the CTAs we see agencies ask include a relevant and easy question that the prospect can respond to, like you saw in the last couple of examples. Can I send over X piece of content? 
Would you like me to conduct a personalized needs assessment for your business? Are you available for a 10 minute call next week? Just don't be vague about the action you want them to take. Number five, and this is super simple, it's your signature. Now, what I don't want you to do with your signature is make it too distracting or have too many details. We want it to be professional, but we don't want an overwhelming amount of information in there because we want to keep the focus on the copy. Now, there's nothing wrong with having your name and number, but I think a scheduling link is the way to go. That way, a busy business owner can cut to the chase and book a time in your calendar. Other things to consider might be including your social media profiles and links to recent blog posts so that you include content that speaks to your credibility, and that's highly recommended. Okay, remember, I made a promise, and now is the time to deliver. We have our free templates. So if you go to the description below, you'll find a link to access these awesome templates. So in this PDF, you're gonna find a treasure trove of gold. You'll have access to the six best cold email templates, the six best follow-up email templates, six of the best engagement email templates, data-backed findings on high-performing emails, and the top subject lines that generate opens. It's a treasure trove of content free for you to rip and use for your agency, and I'll take you through just two of the templates. Let's start with a gem of a template which leverages the social proof strategy. This is a tofu or top of the funnel email with a clear CTA to book a link and have a conversation. So in this example, the seller has done their research and found a prospect that has a clear need. So they've leveraged that information in the subject line and built on it by piquing the seller's attention with a solution and clear time frame. The opener, as you can see, validates that the seller has done their research and the content of that email is packed with value. They've clearly made it easy for the prospect to get in touch by providing a scheduling link and excluding the links, we're only at four lines, so it fits right into the sweet spot in terms of length. Okay, let's move on to a MOFU or middle of the funnel follow-up email, and this template really exemplifies why automations are so key in the cold outreach process. So here we have an example of a prospect that has actually clicked on a piece of content in a Tofu email, but they haven't responded to the agency. So this email was triggered automatically after 24 hours when the lead downloaded that piece of content in the top of funnel email. It's very professional. Uh, the subject line tends to evoke curiosity in the prospect. The opener and the pitch are also very professional. They're not pushy. The agency isn't trying to do a hard sell. They're just trying to get a time in the seller's calendar. So this type of email is really designed to keep your agency on top of the seller's mind. Now, even if they don't respond, what will happen is they'll remember that you sent them that valuable piece of content and that you weren't trying to be pushy or aggressive with your sale. And that's what we want to achieve in a follow-up email. Okay, so we've gone through a lot. We've talked about the anatomy of a good cold email. We've talked about the foundations of a solid outreach strategy, how the email landscape is changing, so the mistakes to avoid. All of this is foundational 101 material. But to take your emails to the next level, you want to deploy a whole bunch of techniques that try to resonate with prospects at a deeper psychological level and really draw them into your messages. Think of this as cold emails 201. We're actually developing a fresh playbook to help you as an agency integrate this into your outreach. If you want me to take you through this, please drop a message in the description and I'll film a separate video on it and I'll give you a number of advanced techniques that you can integrate into your email copy. And please don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified when it's ready. All right, now that we've covered the basics of writing effective cold email copy, let's address timing. Okay, so I'm just gonna give you the information directly in terms of what you need to know here without getting too bogged down into the data. So what we're gonna talk about is the best time, the best day, and the frequency of outreach so you can understand what a good cadence looks like. And this is based on reply rates from tens of thousands of emails that Yesware has analyzed. So according to our latest study, the ideal time blocks for email outreach are 1 to 3 p.m. and then 9 to 11 a.m. 1 p.m. is the best time, and 11 a.m. is the second best time. In general, try to keep within those times for your cold outreach. In terms of the best day, Monday and Tuesday are the most active periods for replying to emails, with Monday being number one. 
So you want to try and send on Mondays and Tuesdays, and you want to avoid Fridays and weekends because the reply rates during those times are very low. It's just not worth it. And now let's talk about the follow-ups and overall cadence for your cold outreach strategy. And I just want to emphasize that cold outreach needs to be a multi-channel approach. So on this table that you'll see on the screen, you'll see what our recommendation is. We recommend that you reach out to prospects up to about six times. We find that agencies who are reaching out to prospects more are closing more deals, but six is about enough. In each of these touch points, we recommend leaving a gap so that you don't overwhelm prospects. So if you're emailing or calling a prospect for the first time, give them a day in between messages. Second or third time, give them a gap of two to three days. Now, this is just a guide, and please feel free to interchange between email, call, social media, etc. We want to keep a multi-channel approach. Now, persistence does pay off, but too much might risk you going into the spam filter, and we want to avoid that. So please stop at six touches and then reach out to them at a later stage in time when there is a valid reason to. So to summarize, as far as timings and cadence goes, try sending your emails on Mondays and Tuesdays and send them at 1 p.m. or 11 a.m. Reach out up to six times and change up your channels. All right, as we're wrapping up, let's discuss some common pitfalls to avoid in cold email outreach, drawing from real life experiences. Now, firstly, let's talk about rejection. Sales in any form is tough. Despite putting your best foot forward, rejection is inevitable. I do not want to beat around the bush about that. Think of it like dating. You may hit it off on the dating app, so you even have a fantastic date, but then your potential match disappears into the wind. Remember, even the best salespeople often have reply rates as low as 1%. So rejection is just part of the process. Don't let it discourage you because the deals you close will make this worth it for you. Secondly, be brutally honest with yourself about your cold outreach efforts. For emails, make your templates or incorporate ours, send a test email, and remember to look at it closely on your phone. Do you like what you see? Would a prospect like what you see? You might go through some pain to get this right, but that will help you grow and be better than your competitors. Last but not least, make sure you check off the rules and regulations you need to follow. I spoke about Google's changes to emails earlier. Make sure you also comply with local laws around spam and privacy. Okay, that is it for me for today. I hope that was comprehensive enough for you to begin or level up your cold emailing strategy. Thanks for watching this video and please don't forget to drop a message in the description. We'd love your thoughts, we'd love your views, and I'm very happy to film a separate video with all those advanced psychological hacks to take your ready, good cold emailing game to the next level. Happy cold emailing and bye for now.